All right, baby, time to finally review Maleficent and piss off all ten of its fans. Oh, this is going to be so sick. Here we go. Hey, wait a minute. This doesn't look right. Nicolas Cage? I don't remember him being in this movie. Wait, Jay Baruchel? Doc Ock? New York City? 9-11 references? Dude, check the news. It doesn't matter what channel. Hey, what do you got? Did you see what happened here? You know what? Bottle rocket meets paper dragon in this. What the fuck? What the fucking fuck? What the hell's wrong with my Maleficent copy? Hold on a second, hold up. Oh. This is not Maleficent at all. Let's not beat around the bush. You forgot this movie existed too, didn't you? I mean, okay, maybe somewhere in your subconscious you're going, Oh yeah, I remember that movie. Yeah, because I brought it up. Not because it's remembered in the same vein as Alice in Wonderland or Maleficent or anything. This one didn't make a big splash either with critics or with the box office. So it just kind of came and went without any real fanfare. The movie exists, and the only reason I'm talking about it is simply because I have to. I could have easily just forgotten this movie like everyone else did and moved on to Maleficent. But in the words of the great meme itself, Professionals have standards. So yeah, we're talking about this one real quick. Only barely though, since honestly, it barely counts for the purposes of this series where I review the live action Disney remakes. Okay, so a little history. Do I even need to tell you what the Sorcerer's Apprentice is? It's become pretty synonymous with early Disney and is considered Walt's greatest short. I know the irony in calling it a short when it's part of Fantasia, but you get it. So despite this movie being 95% its own thing, we do get the famous mop scene from the short. It has practically nothing to do with the rest of the movie and is most likely only here because Disney forced it in there. It's a movie about wizards, so why shouldn't it be an adaptation to an eight minute segment of a much larger movie? We're trying this new thing of turning our old animated movies into live action movies. Surely this will work out, right? Surely no one will hate it, right? They hated it. Well, I'm sure they'll like the next one. In fact, I know they will. They won't stop telling me about it in the comments. So essentially, this is a Disney live action remake in nothing but name only. The rest of the movie is just a fantasy adventure about Merlin's apprentice named Balthazar Blake, who finds a kid in New York who is destined to defeat the evil Morgana and save the world and so on and so forth. Yeah, thanks, uh, but I think I'll just stick with Wizards, but thank you anyway. How much you want to bet this is the movie that made Guillermo del Toro cast Alfred Molina in his Tales of Arcadia series? Seriously, it's kind of weird to hear him say Morgana instead of Morgana, you know? So the movie starts off with this god-awful opening slash narration where the movie just info dumps everything about its backstory and world building into our laps like it's a newborn baby's first meal. This is like the worst way possible to start a movie. No room for mystery or intrigue or visual storytelling or anything, really. There are these awkward edits that look like they were made in Windows Movie Maker. The dialogue is laughably generic. They didn't credit Ian McShane for his narration, you got Tai Lung bringing us into this movie, and you don't credit him? Imagine if we didn't get this stupid flashback and just jump straight to the kid who stumbles upon the antique store, meets Balthazar, accidentally unleashes the villain, he gets wrapped up in the fight, and now there's all this mystery surrounding what just happened. It's better to learn this stuff alongside our main character, since this movie wants to hinge so much on the backstory of Balthazar. There's this moment later in the story where he tells our main character, Oh, love is stupid. Love is a distraction. It's only gonna get you killed. But by that point, we already saw that he was in love with the woman in the opening, so the movie is just dragging its heels, waiting for the big reveal that we already know about, so there's no payoff. Sure, David's learning about it, but it doesn't really affect him personally, so it's nothing but a waste of time. If the movie just waited to share this information over the course of the film, instead of just all at once in the opening, then for the first 30 minutes or so of the movie, you're in for kind of a good time, actually. I mean, don't get me wrong. This movie is very cliche. Our main character is a skinny nerd who wants to get the girl and really nothing else. That's really all he cares about for like 80% of the movie. No matter what happens, no matter what he just went through, in the end, he just wants to get that kitty. Of course, what do you expect from a movie produced by Jerry Bruckheimer, of all people? Somehow, even in a Disney movie, he managed to get away with having our main character look up a woman's skirt. That's how you know these two are gonna have great chemistry. But moving past that, when it's just the sorcerer stuff between Balthazar and 
Maximum Horror Hath. Fuck it, I'm calling him Vigo for the rest of this video. When it's just the sorcerer stuff, it's actually kind of fun. It's inventive, it's visually cool. Balthazar rides a Judas Priest album at some point, so that's how you know it's cool. When it drops the cliche, love-struck nerd trope on David's character and just has him tagging along on this adventure to save the world, it can actually be fun and charming, and I wanted to see where the story was gonna go from there. It even gave us some of that classic Nicolas Cage charm. You know what I'm talking about. Ah, you speak Mandarin. Ah. That's the kind of magic only Nicolas Cage can bring to a role. Hell yeah. Sure, it's far from perfect, but I don't know. I was enjoying myself. I was actually thinking to myself, man, is this an underrated gem? This might actually be a good live action remake. But then it turns into a tedious, repetitive, and boring-ass training montage slash rom-com for the rest of the movie. Seriously, what the fuck happened? You could only go up from here! Sure, there were a few bumps in the road, but you were on the right path! Turn the fuck around! F. 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 So, yeah, at around the 35 minute mark, they retrieve this item called the Grim Hold they were hunting, and now the movie has nothing to do except teach David how to use magic and try to help him get laid. Even though he was already learning magic on the journey, so why stop the journey? Why not just have them continue hunting the Grimhold or fight Vigo some more? Maybe have David learn magic during the story? Don't just bring the story to a complete halt because he needs to get laid. Yeah, this is pretty much the movie now. Now David just wants to impress this girl that has no reason to be interested in him. I mean, sure, he helps her with her radio broadcast that has no significance to the story whatsoever. She's nothing but a piece of ass for our main character to win in the end and nothing else. Which is just so frustrating. I mean, this movie was actually actually on the right track. Sure, it had its cliches, but the movie was fun and inventive for a little bit. It had a couple of funny moments, and Alfred Molina is just so damn good in this role. I think this letterbox review sums his performance up perfectly. I mean, seriously, how can I top that? That is among the highest of compliments that I can give to this guy. Just a pure slut who radiates energy in every scene he's in. You gotta love him. When it's actually doing the sorcerer stuff with these wizard duels, it's actually kind of cool. But when the movie focuses on the training and the girlfriend, it's such a ridiculously tedious ride. It's boring, it's cliche, it's generic. I can accept cliches as long as the movie does something cool with them. And in that first half hour, it seemed like that's what the movie was gonna do. David wasn't gonna worry about that girl anymore. Instead, we were gonna have this cool, magical journey of self-discovery and redemption and epic battles, but no! Instead, David's taking his girlfriend to her yoga class. Fuck off! Sure, every once in a while we kind of recapture that energy, like with this fight scene in the bathroom. I mean, listen to this. I didn't edit that! That's in the fucking movie! Like, seriously! Just give me more campy, stupid shit like that, movie! I want more of that! Less of this! This shit sucks! You got special mirror powers, shape-shifting cars, bringing back the dead, and this is where you put your focus on for most of the movie? Fuck off! This should have been the easiest movie to make fun, even with the shoehorn mop scene in it. Maybe it wouldn't have been a masterpiece, but it would have still been fun in the end. It could have been the next Pirates of the Caribbean or something, only instead of pirates, it's with wizards. Oh, but oh well, I guess I'll just rewatch Wizards on Netflix and ignore that god-awful movie at the end. It's basically the story done correctly, and it even has the benefit of having Alfred Molina in it, so no reason to ever think about this movie again. Thank you. Yeah, I guess I really don't have a whole lot to say about this one. Although, to be fair, it really shouldn't count as a remake. It really is just its own thing that just sucks in the end. It's just every boring, generic fantasy that you can think of. Outside of some cool magic sequences here and there, this movie ain't got an original bone in its body. It's not awful by any means. Still better than Alice in Wonderland, if that means anything. But unfortunately, this is the worst kind of bad. It's forgettable. And I doubt I'll even remember reviewing this movie later down the line. Except for this one moment. This is just peak Nicolas Cage. Ah, you speak Mandarin. Ah.
shadow turns to sun rays. 